Welcome back to another episode of Paint Society. Guys, we got a comeback. Let's take a look. Thanks guys for joining me on another episode of Paint Society. You might remember this one that we did. We did a few episodes on how to replace body panels and we replaced this door right here. We put a new door on it and awesome. Came out really, really, really good. And then we went further into the uh, front door. We did a blend and then we did a blend on the rear quarter panel and you can see it's looking stunning until this happened. Yes, unfortunately, the uh, driver, none were the uh, driver's fault. When an original door got hit, it got backed into and then there was a good amount of road debris that popped up um, from another vehicle and just destroyed this whole inner area. Luckily for us, uh, we are able to do the repair because there was no actual frame damage to the vehicle itself. So what I did here is I learned my lesson early on in my career. How did I learn my lesson? Well, I learned that you need to test fit every single part. You don't wanna get all the parts painted and then get to the point, well, where they don't fit after they've been painted. And that's one of the worst things. So make sure you do your test fits, make sure you do your adjustments. I'll show you some of the old parts that are still over here. And if we take a look at that hood, you can see it's totally bent in. How many of you guys would fix that? I don't know how to fix that properly. That's an aluminum hood. So we are gonna go ahead and replace it. Uh, we'll show you later on in the series, we're gonna do like a matte finish here. We'll show you how do we do that uh, because none of these hoods nowadays are coming with any sort of clear coat inside of them. I mean, it's just getting worse. You can actually see through the paint in some of the areas. Now the bumper sustained some damage to this area. And I'm gonna tell you, if you ever have damage over in the area where it connects to the fender, try to replace it because they never fit quite right. Now the fender got a lot of the damage. Now we can see here on the fender, it's completely cracked in half and a lot of the damage to this area right here. Now I will tell you that insurance wrote an amazing estimate. I mean, everything we wanted, we got. A lot of these parts on these vehicles need to be replaced for only one time use. A lot of these trims right here, you pull these off, they're not going back on and you just don't tape things off like this. Same thing right down here. So. What it's gonna be on this car is we're gonna paint all the parts off the car, pretty much. I might leave the, I might leave the fenders on because I gotta say, um, sometimes with the, with the color, with the blue, this particular blue, if you don't have enough coats on it, sometimes when you go put the fender back on, it does not match. So I'll see which way I wanna go with that. I definitely wanna take the hood off. I mean, there's no way I'm gonna be able to reach all the way over here, I mean, all my short arm guys kind of weigh in and uh, tell me how you get it done other than maybe a step stool down here or something like that. So we have a blend on here and the blend is so that the paint from here and the bumper matches since we have a new bumper cover and uh, hood. Everything is OEM on here. So uh, let's go ahead and I'm gonna take this back off and I'll show you how uh, we take it off and how we uh, prepare some of the parts, how easy it is. And then in the next couple episodes, we'll get into the painting. I'm going to take the uh, car over to the other side of the shop now that it's been um, disassembled. Uh, so this car is going to be worked on obviously in pieces. So other than a door and the fender blend, which we'll get to later, uh, we're just going to bring the car in over here and let it sit for a moment. Now uh, I'm going to show you with those parts, what do you do to prepare brand new parts? How do you prepare OEM parts? Uh, I'm gonna show you some of the techniques that I use that really, really help. So uh, let's get this thing pulled in for now. A lot of suspension work still needed. They did a ton of suspension work already, but the uh, front wheel is sitting back a little bit. Um, so we'll go ahead and get this thing pulled in and uh, we'll start prepping on some parts. There we go, perfect, perfect, perfect. And we got the MDX up on a lift. Now it's time to repair some of these parts and I will say some of these parts you gotta be careful while working on. This fender is like paper thin and then you can actually dent it if you don't handle it right, if you sand it too aggressively. Um, a lot of times uh, these new, or these manufacturers are 
creating these new parts so light so they can meet the uh, gas mileage regulation or at least make it look like they get good gas mileage by doing a lot of weight reduction. I think they're doing some of the weight reduction also with the paint because there is not a lot of clear coat on some of these uh, vehicles on the inside. Now, let's chat about a uh, new part. This is a new OEM part. And what we see here is we see a black primer from Honda. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to prepare something just like this, uh, OEM or aftermarket. It's gonna be similar, although if you get aftermarket parts, the primer that comes on them is not good. I do know a lot of guys that will have problems, right, with the actual primer on some of those aftermarket parts. Even a Kappa certified, when they're gonna put the paint down on it, it just eats it up, it wrinkles it alive. So you never really win on the aftermarket parts. I mean, they do have their place um, sometimes on older vehicles, but we're always gonna recommend OEM, the original um, manufacturer of the vehicle. Those parts that go along with it are gonna be my recommendation. So first thing I wanna do is clean it. We're gonna use a water-based wax and grease remover and a uh, solvent base. Let me show you that right now. Well, we actually got some solvent base cleaner in and uh, they have make different brands. I believe it's right in here. The Smart brand is actually pretty good. And this is gonna remove wax, silicone, grease. You might say, well, there's no wax or silicone or grease, but you don't know who's handled these parts. You know, we get these parts in and they get opened up and inspected and you don't know if the person that inspected it had uh, some fried chicken early on and uh, you know, that's not a good thing. So this is the, the water-based cleaner. Uh, water-based cleaner is uh, gonna remove the contaminants from fingerprints. Why am I doing this now? Well, because I'm sanding. Do I wanna sand the contaminants into the paint? No. Do we want fish eyes? No. I don't wanna buff that hood. That hood is humongous. And we wanna make sure that we get a good clean surface. So I'm gonna take you back into the shop. We'll clean it down. Basically what we have here is a couple towels. Now um, we did put the, uh, we do put the cleaners in pump sprayers. Uh, you can't just use a garden pump sprayer. These are actually uh, meant to withhold the solvents of uh, some of these chemicals. So I like to use water first and water is kind of like uh, bubbly. Before you ask, you can't use Windex. I mean, some people might say, yeah, I have Windex, no problem. But try to use automotive based um, cleaners. If you must, you can replace this one with uh, the water base with sprayway glass cleaner. It doesn't have any of the added scents. It's just straight up cleaner. Um, so it's not gonna leave like a film. Sometimes like, you know, a lot of these uh, cleaners nowadays, they just come with a whole bunch of uh, different scents that are gonna make your house smell good, but your paint work not too good because they're not intended for that. So basically you're trying to wipe as much as you can off. And look at, I mean, <laughs> That is just from sand, sitting around and we don't know the different types of contaminants that are in uh, the surfaces that we're wiping off. All I know is that is dirt. Oh, that is dirt that we're taking off the panel and we're already starting off at a good point. You know, you always wanna put yourself in a situation where you're going to be able to, you know, leave nothing to chance, right? So we'll go ahead and we can kind of wipe this dry a little bit. So the next one is a solvent-based cleaner, and the solvent-based cleaner is basically gonna remove the contaminants from oils and grease and that type of thing. And that's a little bit stronger, um, which I like, because when we're done, it kind of leaves like a streak-free uh, streak finish. Now, with this cleaner, it um, it's gonna be like a lot shinier. Now, if you were to go, go to paint the car right now, I would strongly recommend that you thoroughly dry each and every one of these uh, cleaners off. Uh, but since we're just doing a quick pre-clean, it's not as necessary to do so. So we'll perform this same cleaning process on all of our panels um, just to give ourselves a better chance at getting a clean paint job. There's no uh, time where you're not, you don't get paid to buff, right? You don't get paid to spend hours buffing a hood and it starts in a prep. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get sanding on the hood and believe it or not, your paint job will come out better if you prep it. And then we'll briefly chat about sealers, what they are, and then in the next couple episodes, we'll get into 
um, starting to seal and starting to do some of the paint work on this MDX. You see that after we cleaned it, it's kind of a little bit more dull, which is a good thing because we already know that it's starting to kind of etch into the surface. Now, what you'll need, and I link everything in the description, is you're gonna need your DA and an interface pad. This is the uh, Kovacs interface pad as well. And the interface pad is gonna really <gasps> help take the contour so we can get more of an even sand, right? Also, we have a 320 grit on there. Now, the sealer that we're gonna be using recommends using a 320 grit. You can also use 400. However, I do like a little bit more bite. I don't like my paint to chip. And here at the dealership, we need to make sure we warranty everything. Also, I'm gonna use a maroon scuff pad. This is equivalent to around 400 grit. So we can kind of use these, use this for the, you know, the areas around the edges that we just can't get to. Now, I don't like to necessarily run full blast. A lot of guys will just go <laughs> completely crazy, but the slower you go, the better the paper will cut. How do you know when to stop, right? How do you know when it's too much? Well, there will be areas we might go through to like maybe the aluminum, but we want to try to avoid that as much as possible. So when we go to sand, we'll kind of stay off that edge because we can always come back this, with this edge and we can use, well, we can use our maroon scuff pad and our maroon scuff pad will just pick up these edges just like this you see that we get a nice dull finish now we can see here there's a little bit areas that are kind of a little bit shiny and we can always come over it with this as well because this is a little bit more like uh, rigid and it will go deeper into the grooves rather than a flat piece of sandpaper so don't drive yourselves crazy necessarily what i would suggest to you is kind of get everything sanded down Right, let's do the whole entire hood and then let's go back over it with our scuff pad. Now, once we got it all sanded, we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna clean off all of our um, residue. I will tell you, I do feel like the, uh, the water-based cleaner does pull more dirt out of your sand scratches uh i will tell you as well it's not a bad idea if you have extra time if you're not a high production shop to just wash this down with some degreaser and uh, let it just dry in the sun uh, that would probably be the best route uh, you get a little bit better finish because it's um or cleaner panel because you're able to you know let the water run off the panel and just totally clean it i'll probably go ahead and do that uh, once I have all the parts ready, but just to give you a visual right now of what your panel should look like once it's sanded, uh, we'll be able to show you here in just a moment. Basically, you don't need to go crazy with it. You just need to scuff it up. Now, it might look a little bit shiny in some areas. That's just because some areas have a little bit more scuffing, uh, but if you look closely, it's completely scuffed up everywhere you look there is a sand scratch at some point uh in the surface now don't worry about this because our sealer is going to go right over that our sealer is a thinned out primer and that does not mean you could take primer and thin it out uh, what that means is you need to find a sealer uh, that you can use if you're preparing new parts uh, in the uk i know different areas i think it's called wet on wet primer but in uh, United States and the States, it is a sealer. So this is all scuffed up. Uh, there's still a couple areas. Now that I clean it, I can tell that, hey, you know what? This is a little bit shiny here. So what I'll do is I'll just go around. Once you get that water uh, cleaner on there, then you can see, you know what? It might need, it might need a little bit more in some of the areas. Now, can you put paint right over this? Sure. You can put paint right over it, but it's not the right way. So if you put paint right over that, what you're gonna experience is some chipping down the road. The sealer is a cushion. It's also gonna help with the coverage. So when I put the sealer down on this panel, I'm gonna be able to cover this panel in probably about three or four coats since it is a blue, um, opposed to maybe like six or seven, uh, if we're just going right over this. So I'm gonna use the correct type of uh, sealer coat, which we will show you. But for now, let's go ahead and get this one scuffed up as well.
Uh, after it's scuffed up, this is a comparison of what it looks like before you clean it off. You can see how it looks really, really dirty and why it's so important to get those parts cleaner uh, before you enter them into the booth. Now, one thing I do want to talk to you guys about is the underside of this hood. One thing I got to say is it looks even bigger <laughs> when it's flipped over. So what our paint manufacturer is saying, Sickens, is saying that, hey, all your cut-in areas, your parts that you know aren't seen inside the door underneath the hood, you don't need to sand them because we had a sealer that's going to bite into what we have here. Now, that is a chemical um, adhesion right there, but where's the physical adhesion? I don't know. What do you guys do? The same thing we had with standox. They said, you don't have to do it. And I always kind of like to err on the side of caution. So if they're telling me maybe I don't need to sand the whole entire thing, um, especially because there's a big cover here, I'm thinking maybe I'm just gonna go ahead and do what I usually do and just use my scuff pad instead and just give it something small. Or do you guys just listen to what the paint manufacturer says since they do warranty their work? And do you just clean this off and do you just spray it? Let me know in the comments what you do to treat your inside cut in panels. That's gonna conclude today's video on how to prep. Now we'll get the rest of the parts prepped. The next episode, what you'll see is we'll start the ceiling and some of the painting process, so stay tuned. Guys, if you want to support the channel, head over to paintsocietystore.com. As always, guys, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it. It's just paint. I'll see you guys on the next episode.